It's hard to imagine that uh, part of the United States has been suffering without power for seven months since this all happened. Just give us an update. Tell us how things are going on the Well, island. you know, Puerto Rico had a already antiquated energy system. So when a, the biggest devastating event in the modern history of the United States hit our island, then, uh, you know, it was a, we could anticipate that it was going to be a major disaster. Uh, right now, we're uh, putting the energy grid back up. We're about at 98 percent of clients uh, with, with energy. But really, what we're looking forward is uh, for a transformation of the system. Uh, we think we have a great opportunity uh, to leapfrog into Energy 2.0 make sure that it's client-centric, work with the private sector uh, to make sure that a generation uh, uh, gets at, at lower rates and we are more competitive. So You need uh, private funding to come in and help yes. do that private investment, and uh, that's something that a lot of investors are pretty wary of, uh, yeah. given what's happened to bonds in Puerto Rico to this point. Yes, So, but we've been working on, on several things. Of course, we're, we're engaging with stakeholders. Uh, number one, we're passing a law so that we can facilitate that uh, transfer to the uh, private sector and collaboration. We're looking at a concession for the transmission and distribution and then private generation. Uh, and then the second component, which I think is, is the uh, probably the most critical one, is uh, the regulation framework. Uh, so we're talking to a lot of stakeholders, make sure that uh, that regulatory framework is is uh, the best uh, best practices in the world and that we can um, uh, see that prices are, are, are at best for all of our stakeholders. Can I ask you a question as an investor? Of course. Because uh, you have a very interesting opportunity. If I'm a sovereign like Norway and I want to build a new gas field and it's going to cost me $10 billion, I go to the LIBOR reset market, the market where I can be guaranteed, let's say, a 7% return with a test against inflation over a long period of time. If you needed $10 billion, I don't know what you need, but if it's, it's got to be a number like that, and you could get the federal government of the United States in good faith to back you, there'd be billions of dollars willing to be invested in Puerto Rico because you're a part of America, right. and you need that power. And if I could make 7% in perpetuity, plus it'd be inflation adjusted, I would invest in it. I don't hear that program coming out of you. I, I hear, you know, trying to fix this, trying to fix that. Why not go for the big jugular and say, we're going to build a deal for the world to invest here in this one aspect of our infrastructure. There'd be a lot of interest in it, but you need the feds backing you up. Yep. Well, uh, first of all, I agree. I think that this is a, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, we have essentially a blank canvas to do an energy grid that's a model for the world and for a lot of investment to come. Now, uh, the first step is to make uh, the laws applicable to that uh, in Puerto Rico. Secondly, you, you know, we have a, a, an oversight board in Puerto Rico which limits our capability of, of going uh, to ask uh, for money. So we're limited. You've got to get rid of them. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's a way to do it, but, but also it's uh, uh, what I think is if, if those conditions are ripe and if we have that framework, we can certainly pursue that, and that's my commitment. I mean, I want to let the world know that in Puerto Rico, we want to be a platform uh, to leapfrog from, you know, the 1950s energy grid to uh, a very what, modern energy What do you do about grid. the Oversight Board? Because you just tweeted uh, recently that you are opposed to the new austerity measures they're asking for, things like 10% cuts to the pensions. Well, uh, Here's the thing. We're making the biggest cuts in the modern history of the United States in, in government right sizing. So uh, when, when we see that they add uh, more austerity cuts, uh, we feel that it's, it's going to impact negatively the economy. So we're talking about a 22 percent reduction on right sizing government, uh, cutting over $800 million in areas of health care, education, and so forth, uh, and, and just trying to use that opportunity to innovate and, and give better services. So when I say we're against uh, some of the things, is that the oversight has a role, which is establish what's our cap, right? right? What's our top? But they can't establish the public policy. That's what we do, and that's why I really want to go after uh, innovative solutions, uh, why I really want to open Puerto Rico to the world so that they come and invest. Governor Roseo, we appreciate your time. We'd love to have you back again. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.